Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday, October 11th, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, call the meeting to order. Starting the new tradition of as requested introductions, I'm Phil Cantor, the chair of the Conway Select Board. With me is Chris Waldo, uh, special newest member of the Select Board. And we're on E. Blanchard, the chairman, the town administrator, and Adam Reed, the assistant to the town administrator. Um, first item is the minutes of September 26th. The minutes are really good. So I move to approve the minutes. Second that. All in favor? Right. Um, we have no warrants. I think we could have safely. Had this meeting, yeah, another day, That's true. which would have been good for me. Um, <laughs> but they will all be available to sign. I would say by Thursday morning. Okay, so that is the thing. So um, if there's any way, Chris, you'll be able to get in the the two of the three of us have to sign the warrants in order for them to be valid. To people to get payroll deposited in their bank accounts. So. Um, if you could do that by the end of Friday afternoon. Sure. I don't know if we need to get into the town. Well, you have keys now for the town hall, right? I do. Yeah. So you get in the back. We'll all be on the back page. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and then if you have any questions, don't sign. You can get your questions answered. But, uh, so we'll sign those when we can. Meetings attended by select board members. I had a Frontier School Committee member uh, meeting. Uh, yeah, that's week. And we got the meetings too. <laughs> Pretty fine. Uh, Chris, did you have anything? I didn't really have anything. I've just been doing cybersecurity training online. Uh, good. Public um, comments. I don't see anybody. Unbusiness business number one on the agenda, as promised to Kyle. Discuss and vote on the ACO contract with the sheriff's office. Right, right. Kept a promise. You you kept your promise. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, you didn't you didn't think too much of our idea to give us a trial run, huh? Was above my pay grade. <laughs> I floated it by my supervisors and the uh, superintendent of the sheriff's office and they didn't go for it. So, yeah, do you have any, any thoughts on that particular subject? It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we got some glowing feedback um, about you, Kyle, which is good to see, obviously. Um, Shame we can't do a trial, but I understand so, that you can't, uh, you know, have one rule for one town and different for other towns. So did, did you? So you sent that letter out that you sent to me. Um, let's see, yeah, did so there. There was a, a letter that you sent to me that enclosed all these all the feedback. Yes. You sent that to did you send that to Chris? Or yes. Everybody, everybody yeah, everybody has the all the feedback from the seven towns that responded about um their experiences with the um sheriff's office, ACO and Kyle in particular, so, and everybody was, as you said, pretty glowing in their recommendations. Almost um, yeah. it's always not everybody. We don't do anything you know. <laughs> Nobody does. Um, so, you know, the, I guess, you know, in, in that letter was this was a statement by you and uh, that you had spoken to Joe and that you both agree that the perfect scenario. Oh, no, no, that was me. Right. That was me. I'm sorry. I thought you meant Kyle. No, that no, was no, no, Joe no. and I speaking. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And that the perfect scenario would have been to have a town resident do it. Yeah. And when I look at the total efforts that we undertook as a board to town government to get a town resident to do it the total sum of all of our efforts 
if we really thought that that was the absolute, that that was the best preference, is the total sum of all of our efforts, has it really been adequate? I don't. Yeah. I don't know what I can say is that I think I also put in that letter all of the barriers to having somebody who's on call 24 7 365 days a year and the problems with getting reimbursed with mileage so i mean it's totally up to the board if you want me to go out and advertise again for another however many months so, I, mean, I don't know how long kyle I, you know that you all can hold and keep prorating for us um the the contract yeah, I'm not, I can't speak to the pro rating because again, like the other topic that's above my pay grade, uh, that has to, I have to get authorization that yes, that could happen. Um, but as for the holding part, I mean, you guys could sign on now, you guys could sign on next year. It's not a, it's not like this is the dead set. Like you guys say, no, you're out, that's it. When you guys are comfortable. You know. If, if, if we would have been granted the trial run, I would have been a lot more comfortable saying yes without really making the full effort that we're capable of, that we didn't really do. And yeah, we'll have to discuss what you mean by full effort because I, I we mean, do put so it out because, there. So. Because this position is like, it applies to the non-traditional person that doesn't normally tap into the town website and the- uh, And Conway Currents? Yeah. Um, no, I don't know a better way to do it, honestly. But basically, it's uh, it's putting uh, putting a notice in the Sportsman's Club uh, stuff and the comic uh, Conway uh, next door and uh, things like that. That because as as I've been trying in the past week just to ask people, do they know anybody? And I was approached this afternoon, actually an hour ago, by someone that's interested. Okay. Um, and I don't, um, you know, and everybody in town knows him. He's a young man, uh, born and raised here. Um, but I, you know, I, I, we'd have to sit him down and talk to him and make sure that uh, that we all think he'd be a good fit. Um, and and I'm so. Uh, but, you know, and it's because uh, a lot of these guys, you know, when it's hunting season, they're out in Montana after elk. And when it's fishing season, they're in and they won't Lake Champlain, right, and whatever. 365. And, exactly. and, and so we, we sort of need to ask questions and, and find out. But, you know, and that's just sort of one person and it's just me and I have a very, uh, I've been pretty, uh, I haven't been getting out a lot lately. But I think that I think that when, when we're because when this this is something that we'd be signing, you know, there's no, you know, I feel better looking at all those testimonials. I do, and it's nice. To, it's nice, Kyle. People actually say nice things about you. They really do. Like they didn't have to. We didn't offer them money. We didn't, you know, whatever. Um, and so, so I mean that that that's a very good thing, and it increases my comfort level. Um, and. We may end up, we probably will end up, because uh, like like most towns, that this what, what might end up, you know, we probably will. But I think when, because we are talking about, in essence, doubling the cost, um, you know, I, it's prorated first, but in, after that, it'd be doubling the cost. And we'd be signing on to something where, um, you know, the future cost increases are, are you know, our, our option is either to, opt out of the program or go along with the future cost. And I understand we'd be one vote in that room, but we don't have, we would not have veto power over our own future uh, cost increases or like as an individual town, it would either be participate or don't participate. Here's what it is. You are outvoted. Um, and just, just be aware. Um, I think I also mentioned the cost of training because whoever's coming in is going to have to take the 16 hour class to be trained on this and the board will need to yeah find the funding. so i'm not sure it would be completely doubled just and, and, and actually the stipend was too low yeah <laughs> and, and 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 that 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 the animal inspection officer would receive a higher stipend than the animal control officer is wrong um 
just based on the work level and the amount, you know, everything else. It's just, that's just not right. So, um, but, but I think, you know, be, because it's a cost increase and that that always has to be like first and foremost about as like something that we ought to seek to avoid, um, that we are obligated to give it one more go and try to get the word out and make it happen. And I know that is not exactly music to your ears, that this is a reasonable solution I, to, I, to our problem. I, do, I have no confidence in finding somebody. Just I, I understand honestly, that. based on what I've heard from so many other town administrators. Yeah, we're special. Who, we're special. We're special. We're different. We're kind. And I always believe the solution to all, all of our problems can be found in kind. Um, except maybe this one, but we'll see. Um, but, but you know, the, the, the totals, you know, one, one, one thing in the Conway Current, and um, that's, we, we have to do more to really get the people that are liable to take this position aware that there is a position. And right now we have not reached that group of people. They do not know. Yeah, so I think we, we, we know everything. We don't need to have Kyle back, but if we, we have set ourselves a time limit and if we can't figure it out, we sign on to this. The other thing I will point out is that Joe is- I understand. Yeah. Yeah, so it's done. And we ought to, we ought to get, we got to, when people leave these things, we got to, like, we have to have some kind of letter on formal letterhead that goes out thanking them, whatever, we should probably, Plaque, we like plaques. We don't do, but we should do plaques for things like that. There's too many people that are serving in committees for a long time, and then they come in. We didn't do anything for Bob. We should have done something for Bob. But anyway, um, yeah. So, so that would be that. So that would be my preference is to give it. One more go, and is that the vote of the board? Um, and then if that doesn't work out, <laughs> I mean we're we're a fifty fifty thing. It doesn't. We can, we need a unanimous vote to go forward with anything. Um, otherwise, nothing happens. So I like the idea about the time limit. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'm all about reaching out again and just seeing if we can get locally sourced. But we should have a time limit, especially with Jay saying this. I, I, and, but we, when, when we are questioned about this at town meeting, when the budget line item goes up, we have to be able to look people in the eye and say, we tried everything to fill this in town. And this is what it costs to go outside of town. And, and even if it's a, you can argue that it's a higher level of service and that's not a false argument. But, um, but you have to be able to look people in the eye and say, you tried everything to keep the cost as low as you can. This is what we have to do. And right now, I don't feel I can really say that. Water at the gun club? Yeah. Yeah, like Mark. No, so. Uh, I don't know. You know, we should just till next meeting, just two weeks. How long does it take to get? Oh, we want to be in the current. How long does it take to get in the current? Well, it's the 20th. The deadline is the 20th. It doesn't come out until November 1st. How long do you want to? And, you know, but we're, we're least likely to get something there. We're most likely to get it from having something in Baker's, having something in the, uh, telling Chief Baker to put it on his fire department web thing, because all those guys don't know about it. Um, Our, the sportsman club, Tommy Pleasant, the sportsman's club to put it on their web server, on their web list. Or, and next door, Conway. This is a completely non traditional job search, job hunt. But we're looking for the guys and old people, gals, gender, not important here. Um, the, 
we're looking for people with pickup truck that like the outdoors and uh, know the town. There's a lot of people that answer that description and like animals, and willing to keep the phone on 24 seven and get trained and show up when they need when they're needed. But this hasn't appealed to people. I, I, when I was struck by the young man that spoke to me this afternoon that he thought it was a cool thing. I was like, wow, you really expect to hear someone use the word cool next to, but I can see how you could perceive it that way. You get, you know, like the idea of chasing after a loose horse, and rounding up a stray cow. People like that stuff. Um, so sorry, we uh, didn't. Is it next meeting or when is? Well, when that won't. Like this? You want it in the currents again? Well, it was in there once. It, yeah. Yeah. I think it was once. Might have been in there more than once. To well, be honest it's with you, it's in there once. there's so, so many that we've advertised. I'd have to go back and look. But I think that's the least important of, of all of them. Well, that's the one we know gets to everybody. Yeah, but so. Yeah, it's the people that we're after are the people that use that as a coaster for their beer can on the coffee table. So the deadline's the 20th of what? Well, the 20th of October is the deadline to get things into the currents, which comes oh, out oh, November 1st. It. Okay. So then it's like, okay, it's come out November 1st. How long after it's come out do you want to leave it? One month, say December 1st. No, yeah, not even that long. Two meetings from today. The 24th, and then what's the meeting after that? No. <laughs> Third? Yeah, yeah. The sixth. Sixth or the seventh, yeah. Is the seven okay? So seven the deadline is 11 and seven, and that and that's it. If we don't have, if we can't rustle up an applicant, then the seventh we sign on the tile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Do I mean, continue no, no. I, I think I, th I think you've answered all our questions, and I, I don't think we need to. You know, I don't think you need to come. You know, you're welcome to, um, but you know, but basically, if, if the your the, the the higher ups would have agreed to the trial one, we probably would have agreed to sign on now. But um, but because we're signing on to something that's a more substantial commitment, and we're the ones that got to stand up at town meeting and be able to. Say, say, you know, we had to do this, then I think that we have to be able to say we really tried. I, 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 I totally I understand that. Um, what I will say, just so you guys can have it in the back of your minds, if you do decide to sign on, the one last step is, is it has to go to the advisory committee, which is the, all the member towns that if you guys did join in, you guys did try that, and they just have to approve Conway joining. Yeah, and say so that I saw that the criteria for um, the way your votes are weighted in the advisory committee, that is part of that, like I think 25% of that, if I, if I could be wrong, um, was something about the uh, adjusted gross income of the town or something to do with the, something to do oh, with no, the- no, that, that, that's how the assessments are figured out. Right, right. So, and so, so, so we'll- So each town- So we have, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And so, so um, say Conway does decide to join in, they're approved by the advisory committee, then they're good to go. The sheriff's office is already approved. Um, so basically what will happen is Conway will appoint a representative and a backup representative for any future advisory meetings. Um, and then Conway gets the ability to then vote on um, budget stuff as well as future talents that want to join in. So basically, when a town joins, the sheriff's office gets the initial veto. So they could say, no, we're not adding any more towns right now, or yes. And then from there, it goes to the advisory committee um, to as a second layer of, yes, this town could join. So that, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I know. Well, I just know that on paper, we look better than most towns. <laughs> we really do. It was just from the income standpoint, from the 
municipal financial uh, ratings and bond ratings and every other which way the amount uh, the, the amount between actual expenditures and levy limit all kinds of things like we are in the frontier school district we are the gold standard of municipal finance compared to our three fellow towns but, um, but so I, I know I know if I lived on any in any of those other towns, I'd be hoping that a town like Conway would join. But, so other than that, I think okay, so that's sort of a decision. And we're actually going to do this. Gonna, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. So that's that's about it. <laughs> um and you know, we'll let you know and when, when uh, about the meeting again. But like, attendance is totally optional. If we don't have our own, if we don't have our own person, then we'll be signing on. All right. I'll, I'll plan to attend. That way, if you guys get any questions from residents or anything between now and then, is yeah. maybe watching this, um, we can vet out any of those questions or answer any of those questions at that time. All right. Th now that you mentioned, I did have a question from a resident. And that is when when people call for a lost dog about a, a, their dog being lost, do they get do, do, does a ship so you, a uniformed sheriff officer with a firearm and a marked cruiser pull into their drive? Not necessarily. Uh, most loss reports can be done over the phone. Uh, we have the individual send us a photo of the dog if they're able to, uh, information on the dog, and then we get that posted up on the. Uh, Regional Dog Shelter's Facebook page, which I think is currently almost 20,000 followers and an average found or lost dog post within a couple hours usually gets to a reach of 30,000 people. Um, and we usually use more uh, electronic methods to get that information out there. It's not necessarily that, unless they want someone to come out. If they, if they specifically want an officer to come out, we'll absolutely come out. Um, again, most lost reports can be done right over the phone or through email. That, that in and of itself is an increase in the level of service that we currently have. Just what, just what he just explained, mm -hmm. just that the electronic distribution of that photo is something that we do not currently offer our residents as a service. Um, so that's good. I'm glad I asked that question. I think that was really about it. All right, so um, yeah, that next topic. You, 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 you're welcome to hang out with us. But, you know, I'm gonna yeah. head home, but like I said, I'll plan on joining the next meeting. Uh, All right. you guys have Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Good, Good night. night. All right, discuss and vote on signing the notice of intent for the proposed public safety building. Tremendous achievement. So, anything else you'd like to tell us about that? Not really. So, just to go before the Conservation Commission. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, just let us know and let them know what we. Oh, we've already had a preliminary discussion. Yeah. Okay. So this would just mean the signs it with the board's approval. It would just be you. Yeah. Yeah. The board is approving my signature. Correct. Okay. Yeah. We bear the, the fact that we. But that the facility actually counts as endangered uh, species or whatever. <laughs> it's just because their maps are slightly skewed. It's really like a mapping kind of a thing by like a foot. Yeah. You got any questions about this? So, motion to direct the select board chair to. Sign on behalf of the town the notice of intent for the public safety building, which is the WPA form three for the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. That discusses the buffer zones and the resource area impacts of construction. I approve that motion. Right. Second. And Favor. Aye. Aye. Two names. Thank you. Thank you. I have it on the table back there. Right. Juneteenth discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so um, I know we've been kicking this can down the road a long time. I'd be fine kicking it down the road to the end of time, but. My understanding from town council is that there is no choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a paid holiday. I, I understand that. I just want to make another holiday unpaid. That's all. But apparently that's not a very popular option. <laughs> I think that it would be. <laughs> Sorry, Christmas is a. Uh, <laughs> You don't get off for Christmas anymore. Well, I think it's the day after Thanksgiving. It's a that's, yeah. Right. that's why I had recommended that. Yeah, people that really did like, was, people yeah. really thought that was a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand that. Like, even people that I thought would think it's a good idea thought it was a bad idea. Yeah. So, but um, that was the only one that wasn't a legal policy. Yes. But yeah, if it was Arbor Day, I'd be like, okay, get rid of it. <laughs> Arbor. But, uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving and like <laughs> there is a cost to the town, but it doesn't. It's not reflected in the budget. It's just one day less of services that we provide. Uh, but the so what? But what I wasn't sure is what is the policy as to? I mean, transfer station, for instance, they're never open on Monday. So no. do, so so do they receive? Like who receives? No, they won't receive. It's no, only people that are regularly days. scheduled. Only people yeah. that are regularly scheduled to work on the on a Monday. Um, you mean who's going to get the holidays? Correct. Yeah, well, they're prorated for part timers, and full timers will get the day off. And highway's a little different because they work four days, and they they're all it's 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 yeah. a mixed bag. To yeah. be honest with you. So, um, but. It, now it's not down for a vote, it's just down for a discussion. So we have to we have to well, this again. Well, no, no, because honestly, the, the discussion, well, the last vote was to take it to town meeting. So I guess we could vote to amend that. But given the fact that it's not anything that's really votable, and I mean I suppose technically you could the day after Thanksgiving is votable, right? Yeah. Juneteenth's not. So I think that would be the the question of can we get rid of it or not? Well, yeah. the last select board vote was that you voted you were going to take the question to town meeting. Right. So this is basically just to say that's really not. And the problem with that is that town meeting did vote on all these things before I was at a town meeting when we voted on what the holidays were for town employees. Absolutely. Hmm. Not or the number of holidays we voted on the number of holidays for town employees. Oh, I couldn't find that anywhere in town. And that was, let's say, like 2008, 2009 ish kind of thing. Like, I did not see anything in any of the minutes on anything to do only with the personal committee, not with the number of holidays. The truck, two, three, yeah, John, John worked his first year or two. Um, every the first couple of years at town meeting, all employees that were going to get a raise above the two percent um, had to stand up and justify to the town meeting. But that that's their raise. That's different and, from the from and, the and, and, handbook. And, and, sorry, sorry, yeah. I just because I had I had I at least I couldn't find it. I couldn't find anybody who said who knew about this who said that. It, any of the town meetings that town meeting had ever voted on what's inside our personal handbook. That it was only the Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I don't think town meeting should be voting on what's inside the personal. But handbook. if they voted on the number of holidays, maybe that was just, I, I don't know why they would do that because that is part of the personal handbook. So it doesn't make sense to me that the town meeting would have voted on that. Because I, I just, I, I couldn't find it anywhere. Hopefully when I finally yeah. get all the town meeting minutes all searchable in one PDF. I can just type in the word holiday and it's pop up. And, yeah. But I looked through all around the, the dates of the, I can, I can look again, but um, you know, that would bring up a sticky question, actually, to be honest with you, if town meeting had voted on that. So. But it's a, the, the problem with that logic, though, is that is a new state and federal law that says this is a new holiday since you voted on it. Like, well, right. Like, yeah, like right. You don't those were our old this, holidays right. that we voted on. The right. current holidays, the way that that is, my recollection is that we voted as a town meeting to make it that way. 
um, and that therefore, we don't, I don't know if town meeting can even vote to, well, it would need a town meeting vote to take. Holiday away? No, yes. No, because that's, that's part of the personnel handbook. That's what I'm saying, is that I don't think that that's a town meeting right. issue. And I'm hoping it wasn't ever done at town meeting because that'll money our waters. I could be wrong about all this. I mean, it might be conflating memories. I'm accused of that. But, uh, but if, if you want to make it clean, I would suggest a vote to say you will, you will not take Juneteenth's discussion to. But you probably don't even have to do that anyway because it would be going on the warrant. And if it's not even on the warrant, then you yeah. know what I mean? So I think it's a moot point. I think put this, on, put this down for a vote in two weeks and we'll just vote it as a follow it. Okay. Just be All right. Which would mean we'd have to. Do a motion for reconsideration of our earlier vote. Yes, exactly. Meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if I, we don't have, it's not, we're not like the school that can just direct the school district to make sure no matter what that uh, we do not have school at the that school. Is no longer in session on June 2 because, because that was a forty thousand dollar benefit, and uh, we did not budget for it. Therefore, we are strictly limited the amount of snow days we are we can call this year. Better not be any blizzard. Um, November state election warrant. Right, so that's on the table to be signed for Lori Mister. Is she next door? Uh, I think it's conservation. So, uh, I didn't see that. Oh, I'd be able to explain what it is for signing. <laughs> so it's just the warrant for the ballot. I think we just did this one a couple months ago for the primary, didn't we? Yes. Yes. So this is the warrant for the 2022 state election. Uh, the one with the governor and the lieutenant governor, attorney general, et cetera, et cetera. And the very exciting amendments, the questions, which are actually, there's actually some pretty cool ones. So, and I think that th that's what's going to get people out to vote on these because those are somewhat controversial somehow. So, um, the election is Tuesday, the 8th of November, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we approve the warrant and we, we all sign it, but Eric is not here to sign it. So, the person I will be signing. We can leave it on the back table, too. So the ones uh, it's not legally required. Two, it says two thirds that are required. To, so, so I'll make a motion to approve the warrant. Second a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Changes to the personnel handbook. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, these are a couple of requests that I have, um, some based on discussions with town council. So there's four sections that I would like the board to consider changing. One of them is on page 14 of the handbook, the grievance procedure. Um, my understanding is there, there really isn't anything to grieve in town, but we don't have a union, there's nothing, so this really doesn't, need to be in here. Grief is a very personal subject, Veronica. Everybody's entitled to their own way of grieving. Okay. Um, what, I'm, what I'm proposing here is basically to take out three things which were put in, but we don't have the mechanisms necessarily yet to actually do them. Yes. And I'd rather work the other direction. I'd rather get the mechanisms in place and then come back to the board and say, 
okay, now that we have this process laid out, would you consider, you know, if we decide to put it back in? So the second one is the performance evaluations on page 17. I didn't copy that whole thing. Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I thought that was in the packet. Um, anyway, so it's taking out the performance evaluations basically because we don't do them right now. We don't have the forms or anything. We need to do them. So, okay. But I, I would. We need to figure out a, a, something that we can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that doesn't obligate us to do you know with the top exit kind of thing mm -hmm. just yeah but we need like goals and objectives and something something like that yep sorry i'm just putting mm -hmm. it um, and then the other thing i wanted to take out was under protection of personal information it talks about the written information security program the wisp unfortunately we don't have that yet good so that's one of the things I'm working on in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. But since we don't have it, it seems to me to take it out of here because it mentions, oh, we've, yeah. this has been in here for since 2018, which saying we've also designated blank as the data security flow, you know, and so I thought, let's just take it out for now until we get it. And then we can have a discussion about how. See, the, but before you skip over to that though, I just wanted mm -hmm. to talk a little bit more about the uh, employee evaluation. Sure. Okay, because um, the, the way, the way, the way, government is work is transitioning to is like we've always done every year um a, a percentage every all boats float the same with the rising tide everybody gets the same percentage regardless of job performance mm -hmm. and what what um 21st century way of doing it is to create that amount that we would that we are currently allocating for that gross wage increase would be a pool and that job performance would, that everybody would get some raise, but that people that have strongest evaluations would get a slightly higher pay raise than those that do not get similarly. Just enough so that you reward excellence with cash. Um, that's the whole, that is like the essence of America. Um, that you reward, or the, the hope of it is that you reward excellence with cash. And we have to, we, we do a disservice to, our, to, to, to those among us that are excellent at their job when we give the same percentage pay raise to the person next to them that is not performing their job as excellent. So, um, you know, but, but everybody still gets enough that. There's one more thing to But, but that everybody still gets enough, you know, whatever. So, but that's, that's where we should be moving in, in, in a direction. Mm -hmm. But, but in order to do that, we have to have an actual evaluation structure. Which is why I'm suggesting taking this out now because we don't have any right. of that. So is it like taking the it out behind it, but instead not, of taking yeah. it out, I'd like to replace it with something that works for us. Okay. I don't all right. Without yeah. a personnel committee, I'm not sure how quickly that will be gotten. Well, hopefully, hopefully it would be something yeah. like that, except a lot fewer words and a lot simpler. Um, so but again, this is stuff that we don't want to be rediscovering the wheel on somebody out there when you request it on stems is going to have something that is like that's for us to mm -hmm. assume but uh, but but we should but we need we need to we need to do proper evaluations so um the last and you have one. to talk to the department heads too because like ron and, and everybody else like it has to be something that they're that is easy enough <laughs> and doesn't take so much time. Exactly. Like that's really key. That's like really difficult. You can't have these forms that There's require. It's in there. Okay. But you can't have these forms that require all kinds of time to fill out. It's just so annoying. I know. I know. Um, so I just so I I did purposely put discuss with no vote on tonight because I thought 
I just wanted to bring up these concepts first and, you know, see if you want to vote on them. Well, the, the other thing too, it went, a lot of these things, um, we have, there's all kinds of procedural rights that are in our personal handbook. And not all kinds, but there are, we, we, in the absence of the handbook, we are completely an at-will employer. We are an at-will. However, oh, once you once you introduce a handbook, um, you are creating procedural rights that 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 in effect take you out of employee at will uh, employer at will status, or it can be argued successfully in court that you, that they are no longer an employer at will. If there is some uh, implied contract, um, not necessarily for a length of time, but uh, with certain procedural rights that were granted, so like. Uh, I don't know. So I just wanted I, to say that the fourth one, just just so because this is the one that um, I would I would definitely like some discussion and potentially a vote on by the board is adding to the hiring process the possibility for internal postings first. I think that was just honestly overlooked when this policy was developed because most places have a procedure for allowing internal promotions ahead of a regular hiring procedure. So it would be adding in a, um, a sentence that says, at the discretion of the select board, a town position may be posted internally for up to two weeks, giving current town employees the first option to apply. And then if the position does not get filled internally, then it goes through the normal process. So that was the fourth one to, for the board's consideration. It has to be optional, though, not mandatory. What is the option? The decision to post internally, it says up to the select board. Yes. Yeah. Just looking at this topic, I had to side. Transfer station oh. options for special town meeting. So. So, um, Chris, did you come up? Did you did you uh, did you put together any options? I actually talked with Luke about an option that we both agree upon. Really? Yes. <laughs> Do tell. <laughs> um. So we already know we're currently losing money as is. Um, it's going to be very difficult to we're get. We're government. We, that's all we do is lose money. Exactly. Like <laughs> it's going to be a very difficult transition um, for this town to understand. This is, a, as we have said before, quote unquote consumable tax. Um, so the idea is to uh, inch our way into it. So I think we should still have the vehicle decal sticker. And with that, we offer the trash bag stickers at the same rate. We see how it goes the first year. As far as tone engine, if it reduces waste or not, helps our cost with you know, how many times we have to so um, the stickers are free, like with the yes. that come that come with the they come with this with the decal, and the decal still costs ten dollars. Maybe we include a little bit more because of the sticker price. You know, what would that be? Maybe twelve dollars. <laughs> Nothing that would put people up in arms. And I think we should do. Um, we had two two stickers a week. Well, the part 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 of this is that we we were waiting on information from Jan about what it, what exactly our per bag cost. Well, there was some financial information about our per bag costs or whatever that you were waiting on. No, that I, she was going to be calculating for us. No, I did mention that I could. Sorry, sorry. Um, that I would like to get that to see because I would also like to see the, the financials, like if, depending on the number of stickers that are given out. Um, what does that equate to in terms of dollars? Um, but I have not had it. So is the is the transfer station 
self-sufficient? Is it self-funded? Oh gosh, no. To what and how short are we? Honestly, I have not taken the revenues and put them against the transfer station. We we don't get see, we don't even get MRF revenue anymore. We are now paying yes. for that. Yes. So that was one of our sources of revenue. We get a little bit for scrap metal, but then of course we have to pay for the hauling of the scrap metal. So right. I don't know if that even so I guess so it. so what is the number that we need if if the goal if the goal is to have the, the transfer station as a as a self-funded institution. Uh, in other words, if the user fees to use this, that 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 it would that it would not be a regular draw on the the budget at large, if that's the goal, um, then what would we have to increase the the sticker the 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 window decal to to cover that if that was the only source of revenue? Well. The, the budget is basically let's make it an even two hundred thousand. So divide that by the number of stickers. No, no, no. It's that's the budget, but um, but that's but we get other. There's other. There's not much other revenue. Well, we get we get for our cans. We get for no. That's what I'm saying. The recycling. We actually pay for that now. We don't get anything for it. There's cans. still some recycling that we get. No, scrap metal is the only source that we have coming in so and i'm not sure that i mean if you want to make it a, a, a break even but basically then the discussion becomes you're switching the entire cost from the tax base directly to the consumer the resident and how you know how right now the way it works is that people pay a certain percentage this is three percent of the total budget general fund budget so depending on how much taxes you pay, you're paying that percentage. You right. know, that percentage of your taxes. See, that's is why the that exact this exact value judgment that these decisions mm -hmm. entail. Mm -hmm. That is why this is perfect to go to town meeting for. That is what that is exactly why. Because this is this is what is more important to you, this value or this value. And each of them is are reasonable decisions. It it the, the um like it's reasonable to say the general taxation should shouldn't fund it all because the theory is that the large that the the theory there is that those that are most able to pay are also among the largest landowners and the largest taxpayers and therefore it's most appropriate that they bear the highest burden however that's that's not a complete Venn diagram like mix up, and there's lots of large landowners in town that are like tenth generation legacy farmers that the land is their only, you know that that they struggle with taxes every year just like lots of other people. Um, so, it, but so, then if you shift the cost, it, yeah. So the, I, the, guess, the, I guess I guess you shift your cost, then it's like, well, is that real? How fair is that to the people that only? take one little bag of trash per month or like not even that, then, then all of a sudden their their cost to, to take the trash out goes up a lot. I guess but, what I would say is as your town administrator, my recommendation would be that the select board keep the authority over those decisions because so, once it goes to town meeting. So this is again, the warrant is something that we write and that we have the ability to shape a decision at town meeting in the manner that works for us as a select board. Um, and that is that this get you set something up as a non-binding referendum with a select board vote that if any of these three or four options are chosen, the select board will honor the choice of town meeting. In a non-binding referendum. Correct. And but that how way- how can you say you'll honor a non-binding referendum? Because if I'm sorry, I'm just not used to the process. Because because if if town meeting decides to make floor amendments and change something that makes the revenue part of the equation all wacky and it doesn't make sense from a revenue perspective for us to do that, 
then we don't have to agree with the results of a non-binding referendum. We set it up so that the results, um, it's A, B, C, or D, or whatever, that's how many buttons are on the clicker, and that that is how, and we make sure that all of those results uh, accomplish the goals that we want. And that is a doable thing. That is, that is, there's, you know, and one of it, it, there, the, and the goals also compete with each other to some extent. One of the goals is making the thing revenue neutral. One of the th goals is reducing the amount of waste. Um, <clears throat> you know, in those two things, there's actually some conflict between both of those goals. Um, but you know, and, and the, trust democracy. This town is like the, the, there's a belief. I, I, I know you said it and Jan said it as well, that this is too much, that, that you, it's too dense and rich of an information flow to give to people at town meeting, that they're not gonna be able to digest it all, that the quality of the decision-making is gonna disappoint you. And I, to, I, I really disagree with that, that thinking. I, I, um, I have been amazed at town meeting at their ability to digest like thick zoning bylaws and stuff that is handed to them the, the the morning of and wasn't in anything you know the and it and the people digested it read it on the spot asked really intelligent questions voted with amendments that were well thought out and like this town is has a lot of smart people in it and you can um like uh, I'll, I'll no longer ever like doubt the intel, the collective intelligence of town meeting. Like they get it right, and they're they get it. the The idea that it's too much, that it's too whatever. It, I I I really my experience tells me that uh, that that's not a problem in this town. I've been in town like, when I went to Deerfield. I couldn't believe how dumb they all were. <laughs> you realize this is recorded. Oh, yeah. I would say, I'm joking. <laughs> Deerfield's not all done with some of them. I would, I would, I would mention that Erica def definitely would like to be in on the discussion as well. Yes. So. Yes. Right. So, but um, we do have to start really getting our head heads around the special town meeting. It's approaching. And, oh, I know. I think we're going to have we, to close the warrant on November seventh. And so that means <laughs> so, the twenty fourth. Mm -hmm. We need to have a joint meeting with the finance committee. Yes. I've we need to have them. the department heads that have capital requests come in. Yes. Um, and we need mm -hmm. to have like the transfer station options at special town meeting like fleshed out uh, with the town administrators assisting and patient uh, assistance. Um, because I just don't think one of those options should be keeping it as is. No, and I I I was a little bit too uh, glib when I said that. That is not really an option. Um, there there should be an option that is the least that that you can accurately say as the least amount of change. But that's not the that's not the the you know we need to shift the pendulum. It's too much on just general taxation and not enough on uh, on, on encouraging the reduction of waste. And, uh, you know, part of getting the costs under control is reducing, waste. reducing the amount that we pay by exactly. reducing our waste stream. Right. And we have mathematical proof that we're disposing of a lot of waste that does not come from our town. There's no other way to explain those numbers. And, and and so part of this whole thing has to be like to me uh, finding the balance and letting the town figure that out at town meeting, but well, giving them just just um, from the other side of that. Part of the reason that the idea of rolling out the free stickers for the first year to see how things go is so appealing, at least to me as the transfer station manager is that there is no added cost to the resident. Nothing is actually changing for them except they get a free sticker they have to put on their bags or barrels. Yeah. And that's it. 
And that right there will have them think about how many bags they're producing because they're actually going to have to count how many stickers they're using. And pay for additional stickers. And pay for additional if they have more than two bags of wheat. So and all those all those details have to be like set forth what the sticker price is for the additional stickers, what the I, amount I is think that should be those. separate though. I think we should right. already enact those policies and then have some questions about how do we get this budget more to a, a, a neutral source right, right? so i because if we're talking if you're saying two hundred thousand, we have 1200 users 1200 stickers is that about right it's more, it's closer to a thousand you know i mean we only have 600 something households right. so we're talking the number of and people may stop buying as many stickers the sticker price goes up if you know what i mean so let's say a thousand so yeah that would be so that's 200 per mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we're only getting 10. Mm -hmm. So we're getting ten thousand dollars on a two hundred thousand dollar budget. So I, I think we should start with saying this is going forward. You're going to have stickers for these bags, and then the questions in town meeting should be based on how we cover the cost going forward. People are going to ask straight up how much are the bag stickers going to be. Yeah. Well, these are like these to, are details. To start, to start off. To start off. Uh, but they're free. You get right. you get 104 free if you right the extra well. extra stickers. So is three dollars. You know, it, but, <laughs> no, but these are the details that Jan is more than willing to help, right. based on her experience, help the board make decisions on. Um. Anyway, so so and also the other thing that appealed because the other problem that has been brought to light by Jan is how much out of town trash we're probably receiving. Exactly, that's what I just said. If people, I know, so if people are getting these free stickers, I mean, unless they're giving them away to people out of town, which they may still do, but those are their stickers, at least that we would still have, know that we have a finite number of trash coming in. So that would take care of two of the big problems right there. We'd start people thinking about reducing waste it would limit the out of or get rid of hopefully the out of town trash, all while making people think about how much trash they're producing for no cost to them. Yeah. Uh, and then after and of a year, course the size it, of the bag, right? The amount of stickers per bag. Right. Right. All the logistics, Jan right. would be great at helping us figure out. But then after a year, you could come back and say, okay, this is how it's worked. This is how, you know, now how do we tweak it? Um, I think for town meeting, actual costs will be very helpful. Just lay it all out. Mm -hmm. This is how much it cost us. Mm -hmm. This is how much we're getting. This is how short we are. Trash is only going to get more expensive as time goes on. But here over the last three years, it's shown an increase in waste. And where it's projected in the next three years can't continue to so i if you could get me the numbers i can come up with the chart and you know to, to me if 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 the total cost to the uh to the taxpayers economy right now through through their property taxes is two hundred thousand dollars we that the goal should be to reduce that in year yes mm -hmm. and that half half I that agree. cost should be should be borne by the users of the, of the facility and um, and then we should fashion options that achieve that objective. So to me, that would be an increase in the in the length of stick of price. If we get what we get right now for the ten dollar per sticker. What do we get for I mean, we have we have what how many stickers do we have? I'm not sure what you mean. How the many window, the window, the window, yeah. Oh, uh, I think it's like, uh, between eleven hundred and a thousand right. somewhere. It's ten dollars each. Yeah. So what's that? That's that's ten thousand. Ten thousand. If you have a yeah, if you have a thousand, it's ten thousand. Yeah. So okay, thank you, professor. <laughs> thank you, professor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, you were an actual math teacher. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, Phil. I'm really bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, 
So that so you know doubling the sticker would give us twenty thousand. Yeah, which is not going to make it. Which is not going to make a big. Mm -hmm. And actually, to get to one hundred thousand, the sticker would need to be a hundred dollars. So um, that's a pretty tall drink of water right there. I don't don't know if I could really go for that, um, but. So reducing trash would be the way to go, which yes. would reduce the amount of money you spend both on tipping and home. Yeah. So. And that just doing three bags up to a hundred, whatever, and then three stickers up, to, bag stickers up to a hundred, and then making people pay just that first year for the rest, that might go a long way towards achieving that. It would be nice to see. I mean, um, when I was chatting with. Um, Ashfield's town administrator, he actually lives in a different town and they redid it recently and went to, um, you know, a pays to throw program because I think he said that they dropped like 50% of the trash almost what, immediately. That's what Jan predicted as well. And that's, you don't, you don't increase. And I, I can tell you in South Hadley when I was there when we did this, that's exactly what happened. We, I think we went down more than 50% eventually. But the recycling does not come up by the same amount, which is kind of funny when you think about it. So what you're really thinking is, where the trash come from? Because it's not, you know, it's not equal volume with the recycling that's, you know, so we probably stopped off. And just having people think, for once having to think about what they put in their bags. And let's face it, there's so many people in Conway who are already, they make this much every month. You know, yeah. they don't have any trash. Yeah. I think a lot of people so, are like that. And there's other people that just generate, just you, know, mm -hmm. you swear they live, all, everything they consume is like single use plastic. <laughs> like okay. you just don't understand how it's yeah. even possible. It's like the employee phrases you were saying, the great motivator is money. We all know the great motivator is money. So if money is incentive to do a better job, it could be the reverse of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can exactly. be the incentive for you to do a better job with exactly. your waste or it's going to cost you. So, um, and you know, just since Chris, that you know, I was in a, uh, I had a sort of multiple correspondence exchange with Jim and me. Um, she was trying to talk me out of this idea to take this to town meeting, just like, just like Veronica <laughs> was. Um, but I really feel strongly that this is the way to go. And that, that, that you know, I, I think it's possible to make these changes and not have the town pissed off. Yeah, I, and, I and agree, like, but I think it should, like you, like when we were saying, a two-tiered approach. Yeah, yeah. It needs no, to change means, now. Yeah. And then we can offer yeah. questions to town to say, what are we going for? Yeah. And, um, and I, th I think people are going to really, um, I, I get a lot of feedback about this now. And um, uh, most people that, that I talk to are, most people that I talk to, um, are, are very pro back sticker. I'm really surprised. I got a couple, a couple of really anti back sticker, but um, most people are just are just like it's not fair that I have to subsidize all these people that really don't care about recycling or reusing and are just just generating insane amounts of waste. Um, it's not fair to the plant. It's not fair for any of us. It's just like you know, the only way to move to change that behavior is to give people a change. Exactly. So, um, so, we, so that's one option. That's one option. The, the, another option would be to do away with the, the window decal and make the stickers, the, the back stickers more. Um, I wouldn't recommend that because then how do you know who's coming in is actually from Conway? Well, that was so, the, and and that that was what Jan Jan talked about that as an option though, and so did the people at the not having a permit sticker. Yes, yeah, in Charlemont. Well, in Charlemont, I know they didn't, but I don't know. I, I, I personally don't think that's a good idea because, I, like, yeah. you're never going to make the sticker worth enough to to make revenue off the trash that's being dumped by those people, because it's going to be a certain type of person. It's going to be a Contractor builder, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's done with the stuff. Mechanic. Mm -hmm. Well, we have look, we have four, <laughs> we have four buttons on the clicker. Yeah. Actually, so, I think you already said one pre programmed, but I think that's what you said. I don't want a refund. I want a one quarter refund on my clicker purchase then. Um, so, uh, yeah. 
the so then maybe it, it's also change right people fear change so if they know they're still getting their decal they can put on their well, car what i like about it is that when you're parked in the middle of nowhere and one of these maybe you're out hiking in the woods and you see another car parked in the middle of nowhere and you see a conway window sticker on it you immediately relax just a little bit yeah you really do and it's nice when our local police can see that it's a conway window sticker um before they decide to pull you over yeah, some issues with that. Not me, <laughs> not me. Friends of mine, then. Friends of mine that feel it's a, it, it, it's a talisman. It's a good luck talisman for a police department. Yeah. Um, so, uh, sound like a plan, Ronnie? <laughs> well, I assume the discussion will be continued at the next meeting. Yes, yes. I'm going to yeah. come up with a proposal for our next meeting laying out what I think should change now that is not a monetary change mm -hmm. that would affect the townspeople. And then if you guys, everyone agrees upon that, we can do that and then move on to the questions for town meeting. That works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very nice, I, I like that. Yes, it works, it works very nicely. So, the, but we want to we want to be able to next meeting have this like not exactly put to bed, but pretty well close to it, so that we can vote it on the seventh and it can be final. Like the, the the time to really nail this down is between now and the twenty fourth. New business, nothing. Items not anticipated, 48 hours, nothing. Town administrator update. It was a lengthy update compared to the report. Maybe, maybe I just read this one. As I did always. I was waiting in a hallway. I was waiting in a hallway and I was glad to have something to read. Um, yeah. Uh, is there anything that you want to just because one of the things that somebody also that we, we do have a couple of regular viewers and um, some of them have recently returned from you know, nursing homes and whatnot and are back to being regular viewers. And, um, and they, the, the town administrator update is, is not discussed. On, and, and oh. I want to know what is the town administrator doing? Okay. And I, I read a couple of your updates to them to let okay. them know. But, um, <laughs> but so, you know, you don't have to read the whole thing, but if you just want to give us a highlight or two of something that's particularly noteworthy that you think that the residents of the town would appreciate hearing about. Um, sure. So the final, they call it a tranche, the final of our ARPA funds that were promised to the town, um, the total that we were to receive was $559,852. So we got the last bit of that um, on September 29th. And so far we've obligated about 150,000. So there's plenty for the select board to discuss about what to do with in the next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, but in reality, uh, we're putting, we're gonna be putting that towards the public safety building and the, this town hall. We don't know really how much there's going to be after that. No, um, that's well, that's absolutely true. If that's but the board hasn't voted that yet. Correct. So, um, so you know, I'm going to a bunch of trainings and things still. One of the things that I went to last week was well, I attended virtually was the Massachusetts Cybersecurity Summit, which um boy, it was a long training, it was the entire morning at 8:30 in the morning. It was a long day. It was really good to see um what they were suggesting that towns do. And one of the main things they said was that, you know, 80% of the incidents happened through phishing, which is one of the reasons why I had wanted to have this executive office of, um, I forget it, EOTS something, security and something. Um, and uh, which is training people who have the town emails how to recognize um, Phishing emails and other threats that might come in um, to get into our system. Anyway, so th there's a lot on on my plate to deal with for cybersecurity, but 
um, that was really interesting. Uh, one of the things uh, that I really should mention is that the Highway Facility Committee has set the date of Sunday, October 23rd from noon to four as the big grand opening of the highway facility. It is not the grand opening. It is the ribbon cutting. Okay, the ribbon cutting. The, and and <laughs> open house. An open house, all right. Ribbon cutting and open house. Yeah. Oh, I think I did put open house, all right. But ribbon cutting, that's what gets the, that's what gets you. You know what ribbon I want? I, I suggest that they cut, caution tape. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. Yes, sure. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. have it already anyway. Yeah. Why well, get a red ribbon? It makes sense that I'm going to use it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, that, that kind of thinking we should get Joe some taxidermy for his time. And... <laughs> <laughs> a squash, a squash squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> so Thanks. Thanks for your years. I may have something in the attic. A squash squirrel with a big tire mark up its back. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Good. Um, uh, select board member comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mail. We have we received a, uh, a letter from a cannabis cultivation host community agreement. Uh, Sun grown alternatives. We don't don't know anything about them except for the letter from the lawyer that says that they're looking into. Uh, Location at zero Shelburne Falls Road. We did get the, the name. Yeah. And the parcel. Sun, Seven acres. Right. What is that? Um, oh, and like, and the, the request from their attorney was that um, we allow a Zoom meeting instead of the mandatory required public real life in person meeting. And uh, yeah, they actually included a sample letter that they wished us to send to the uh, Cannabis Control Commission. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I you know, it's not down for a vote or anything like that. It's not in the agenda to put up for a vote, but I have no appetite whatsoever to switch from a live meeting something like this is a meeting that people show up for mm -hmm. um, and have a lot of concerns about and this is really their only meeting um, before you know it gets a, the, so there's two steps to this they, they they sign a host community agreement with the select board and then it all goes to the planning board and then the planning board has public meetings but um, this get this lets all the residents have a first bite of the apple and uh, it lets it begins to have a relationship. They, the people that are going to run this business need to have a relationship with the residents of the town and their neighbors. And the only way to really make sure they do that is to make sure they meet live and in person. So I, I would ask that we respond to them with a thanks, but no thanks. We welcome and encourage any business to apply for, you know, to relocate or to locate in Conway. It's like a democracy straight up. Yeah, so the, the next meeting is the 24th, and that's going to be pretty stacked from what I can see. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be an executive session afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so and we need to have a joint that, that has to be posted as a joint meeting with the finance committee. They will. And, and they have to have yeah. a set time for, to start. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what else? And we, we have to have fire chief and highway mm -hmm. bus here. And they have the finance committee has to have all that information before they meet. Yes. Is that everything? 
So with that, in the motion to adjourn at 7 for 715. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Stand adjourned.